Today on Customer Tech Talks, we talk with QNet, who led a digital transformation of their e-commerce platform. But before we jump into the interview, let's take a look at the video. QNet is an e-commerce direct selling company with customers and distributors in nearly 100 countries worldwide. We sell a wide range of both physical and digital products in our e-store, decided to improve the lives of our customers and build sustainable income and communities around the world. QNet have embarked on the digital transformation program and work with Microsoft to migrate its technology infrastructure from legacy on-premises data center in Hong Kong to Azure. The company was able to enable new features and services, reduce downtime, and most importantly, enhance customer experience. We have built a very strong relationship with Microsoft in their technology vision, focusing on customer success. I'm joined today by Amir Dean, Chief Technology Officer, and Igal Igal, Chief Information Security Officer for QNET. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Ben. Now, QNET is part of the broader QI group, providing a global direct selling platform. And I can imagine that facing down the prospect of migrating a platform like this was pretty challenging. Can you share with everyone how you got started? Sure. Like a lot of businesses, QNIT as a business just wanted more and faster, right? And uh, we were operating on a 20-year-old platform, and I mean that quite literally. We were running SQL Server 2000. We're in 2021. Um, the joke was uh, our technology is now an adult because it's 21 years old, right? <laughs> so, so we were running on, on really old technology. But the business wanted to, um, they wanted to expand to newer geographies quicker. They wanted to constantly add new products, improve the enrollment process, have more better engaging mobile apps. And the business was just trying to compete um, digitally, but our infrastructure, the QA, the dev cycle were so terribly slow, and, and we just needed to go faster uh, uh, to improve our time to market. And, and the cloud provided us with a lot more tools to support that drive and that desire. Now, aging infrastructure wasn't the only reason that drove this migration. Agal, can you share what some of the other factors were that helped you kind of, I guess, drive this move to the cloud? Yeah, sure. One of the catalysts that drove the company to the cloud was the inability to actually answer the security posture of the company. And obviously, they had two security incidents as well. The executive board had always been asking Amir, the CTO, how secure are we? And that, and that was a very difficult question to answer simply because they were in a traditional data center. And if you know traditional data centers, to be able to try and get logs out and metrics out is extremely difficult. I, I remember doing a risk assessment, first of all, at that time, and also a maturity scoring for the company to see where exactly the company was at from a cybersecurity perspective and presenting those results to the board and, and telling them, you know, so if we were able to go to the cloud, we'd probably be able to reach that level of security maturity within one and one one and a half years to two years, as compared to um, if we were staying in the same data center, it'd probably take us around three to five years. I knew that if we leveraged um, Azure security uh, tools that would actually be able to accelerate all of this. And uh, at that time, we also had a SOC partner. Uh, however, the SOC partner was only uh, monitoring eight perimeter devices out of the four or 500 assets that we had. What we did was, even before we started the full migration, while we were in a hybrid state, we started to pump all of the logs and the signals into Sentinel. And actually, before we knew it, we, we were able to see everything. We were somewhat in a level where we could have metrics come out as well with the help of Azure Security Center. It was a very scary page. The portal, if you went to the Azure Security Center on day one, you did not want to go there. Because because <laughs> finally, we were able to actually see the metrics and understand what, what, you know, what we had to do. And then it all put together some plans for actually the next steps. Wow, that's that's really impressive and, and great to see the way you used Azure Sentinel to really kind of kickstart that process as well. Now, this is Customer Tech Talks. I want to shift the focus a little bit and talk about some of the people benefits you also noticed during this process as well. Because the truth is, we can have all the tech in the world, but it's the people who really make it work. 
Now, Amir, can you share about how the IT department viewed this migration and, and more specifically how the digital transformation changed not only the tech, but the business as well? Yes, actually, um, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this many times before. I mean, you are Microsoft, but nevertheless, for us, the most enduring aspect of, of the whole journey was, was how the technology actually helped uplift and engage the staff and the kind of personal impact it had. Uh, we um, started with a culture where people were very afraid to make mistakes. So they would just rather not act than actually act and break things. The, the great thing about shifting over to the cloud was, was basically you, you end up designing for failure. You specifically test failure scenarios. And, and we, when we started encouraging people to break things, the anxiety associated with failure completely went away, right? I mean, I think I think that the best example is um, you know, early on when we we're trying to kind of build out our infrastructure. We we were using you know infrastructure as code and Terraform and things like that, where one of our DBAs accidentally deleted the whole data center. Like he, he literally <laughs> he literally um, deleted. I mean, everything the, the 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 routes, the networks, the DNS. I mean, the, the whole thing suddenly I'm, I'm typing and it just disappears. He, he was very worried that he'd done something really bad, but you know, but but you know, we we pivoted our response as well. That was obviously a really crappy design, and and, and we needed to improve the design so, so that you know, a one person cannot delete everything, right? We we went to a place where, and when we gave people the opportunity to self improve, it really reinvigorated the the workforce globally. Uh, it, it improved employee engagement and satisfaction in their daily activities across the board, and people started contributing, right? And 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 they started creating some really interesting solutions with, with, with the 200 plus services you guys have. So, so uh, ultimately, I, I think it, it made us better as a company and we started you know, creating better solutions. So really great to see not only that it had such a positive impact on the business, but also the people and their ability to grow and learn. Can you share some of the other lessons that you'd potentially share with others who are looking to start their global migration or maybe are already partway through that move? We're based obviously here out in Asia, you know, and we're mostly based in in Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, Philippines, and Malaysia. And in general, the tendency out here is to outsource everything, and and that's non-core to the business, and and that includes infrastructure management. And the interesting thing here, obviously, is that the cloud is such a paradigm shift, and it's more geared towards a self-service model and an API model, and 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 you know, and it's it's more DevOps and infrastructure as code. And so we spent a good deal of time actually training and investing in our staff. I mean, almost the first six months was just kind of getting them up to speed. And I'd say that was really the most important thing, education, really kind of investing in your staff because it really, you, you reap the rewards and you, you can see that they become a lot more productive and are able to get you a lot more output than you ever could. And the other one is, I'd say, really go at your own pace because um, we used a phased migration approach. Essentially, we, we, we got an express route. And so we were able to extend our data center into the cloud. And this allowed us the flexibility to move gradually over time, right? Because it's all just part of one big network. I could kind of move everything over or just move it a little by little. And this allowed us to basically manage our risk. When we just migrated the front end of infrastructure to the cloud, we, that already gave us a lot of benefits from, from in terms of security and velocity. And over time, you move the rest of the stuff over. So I'd say education and just go it in your own pace. Don't rush it. That's some, some really great lessons from the migration side. Now, Igal, what would you say to those who are either at the start of that security journey or, or looking back on your own journey, lessons you'd share with others in a similar situation? One of the first things that companies require to think about when they're, when they're thinking about cybersecurity is there's always this tendency or this want to throw controls at the infrastructure. Uh, I think that is a wrong approach. Uh, companies need to think about the idea of developing their own internal cybersecurity strategy. And what we did for uh, QI was actually to look into the literature as well as the best practices there are, either from Microsoft security architecture guidances uh, or rather from the NIST cybersecurity framework sort of kind of put this together and set it up for the company culture. And we had a strategy before we actually started to move things around or design things. The second thing that I'd definitely advise any, any kind of company that's moving to the cloud is definitely leverage Microsoft security community. I mean, there is a an amazing amount of support that comes from people who are actually connected into that. 
and using GitHub, obviously. You know, the whole idea of when we wanted to do, let's say, automated responses to our incidents, um, like a SOAR or a playbook or whatever, we would always go back to uh, GitHub and, and, and sort of get inspiration from there. The final thing is obviously exactly the same thing that actually Amir talked about, which is the boost, the idea of people learning about how security works gives from a career perspective. And it, it has a, an overall positive uh, satisfaction um, to their um, job as well. Some really, really great lessons there and, and great advice for those getting started as well. Amir, Igal, thank you so much for taking time with us today on Customer Tech Talks. Thank, thank you. you so much. And of course, as both Amir and Igal said, one of the biggest things you can do to get started on your own journey is to go and take advantage of the learn resources that we have available for you to start your own journey there as well. If you want to learn more about things like Azure Sentinel or migrating your own infrastructure, you can follow the links on screen now to a bunch of free resources available on Microsoft Learn. You can also follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for the latest updates on customer stories going forward. And if you'd like to join us on Customer Tech Talks to share your own story and learnings, we'd love to hear from you. And you can email us at cttalk at microsoft.com to get started. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you on the next Customer Tech Talks.